Good morning, happy Monday. Coming to you from Bakersfield, California. Hondo YouTube. Kevin Thompson is a pastor of a church in New Orleans. And he has a YouTube channel called Beyond the Fundamentals. And 143 of his videos are defeating Calvinism. So he's defeated Calvinism. And I, I made a video a while ago about one of his videos where he talks about Acts 13.48 that says everyone who was appointed to eternal life believed in Jesus. Acts 13.48 When the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing and glorifying the word of the Lord. And as many as had been appointed to eternal life believed. So his method of hermeneutics in this passage is to compare phraseology, compare phrases, and deduce. So I compared the rejection language Paul uses with the Jews in these three places. In Acts 13.46, Paul says, Seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. In Acts 18.6, Luke says, and when they oppose themselves, and blasphemed. So I put these two side by side. Notice that in both cases, it's the Jews themselves doing the putting from, the judging, and the opposing. Nobody is doing these things to them. Nobody is doing these things for them. They are doing it to themselves. He says that the Jews judge themselves to be unworthy. They condemn themselves. And he says that because of this, then this verse, which is the passive voice, means that they also pointed themselves to eternal life. So he takes passages where they sin and says that they trust. That's, that means that they also trust. That's not what the scripture, that's not what the verse says. He confounds two entirely different things. Whereas the passages that he begins with talk about um, men rejecting God. They judge themselves unworthy of eternal life. Meaning they condemn themselves because they sin. They don't believe in Jesus. And he says that because of this, they also appoint themselves to eternal life. Not that they believe, but they have some eternal authority. Or maybe he doesn't believe in predestination or election. Or that they, or that there is an eternity past where um, God elects us. I mean, I know what the Armen Armenians would say, that God elects us because we believe. But he doesn't say that they believe. He says that they appoint themselves to eternal life, which is an entirely different thing. And he, and he confuses that. He says that it is the same as rejecting God because they judge themselves unworthy. And that's not even the same thing. It doesn't say they appoint themselves to damnation. So... He's so incompetent. It's just unbelievable that anybody would would listen to him. So we do not appoint ourselves as if to elect ourselves. It's the same idea to salvation. We we sin against God. That's something that we do. We judge ourselves unworthy and we condemn ourselves by our sin. But it is not the same. As believing in God it is not the same as choosing ourselves to be saved or appointing ourselves to salvation you can't equate the two and you can't say because they sinned they also believe it's just they're not the same thing anyway he uses that that method of exegesis we're going to compare uh, these verses instead of just reading what it says <clears throat> And so I looked through some of his videos because I wanted to punish myself. And all of his videos are like 
hours long. One hour, one and a half hours, two hours. Or he needs all this time to say what the verse clearly says it does not say. And so I found a short one, which is a snippet from my laundry video. And he uses this this kind of manipulative, stupid way of reading the Bible. The verse is John 6, 44. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. First he says that... Does Jesus Christ, who's in red letters, does Jesus Christ know the difference between the Holy Ghost and the Father? Yes, I would say yes. Calvinists believe that the Holy Spirit draws. We do believe that. But he says that Jesus said the Father draws, as if the Father and the Holy Spirit do not want the same thing. So that's his first problem. That Jesus should have said the Holy Spirit. When we know in other places, Jesus said in John, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things, convict you of sin. In other places, the Holy Spirit reveals reveals the truth, enlightens our mind, these kinds of things. But if Jesus doesn't say the Holy Spirit in a specific verse, that means that it's not the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit and God are different, and presumably they don't want the same thing. I don't know why he would point that out. The Spirit of God and the Father want the same thing all the time. And there's lots of places where we're used interchangeably. We see the Spirit of Jesus, we see the Spirit of God, and then we see the Holy Spirit in other places. He that believes on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up, rise him up when? Last day. Last day. I am the bread which came down from where? And I came down from where? No man can come to me. Where is Jesus now? Heaven. Heaven. How are you going to come to him? you got to go to heaven. Right? When do you go to heaven? Is this talking about the Holy Spirit drawing somebody to receive Christ? Or... And then he goes on and he says that no one can come to me unless the Father sent me draws him. I will raise him up on the last day. So these are two things. Coming to Jesus and in the future Jesus will raise up whoever comes to him. But he says that coming to him is the same as raising up on the last day because Jesus is in heaven. Jesus was not in heaven when he said that. In the passage, Jesus is talking about the Pharisees, the people who who could not understand what he was talking about, because he was talking about eating my flesh and drinking my blood, which was very strange. And he did that to purposely, to intentionally confuse the Pharisees and to show them, you don't know what's going on here, because the Father does not want you to know. The Father is not drawing you to me. You can't come to me, you can't understand what I'm saying, because the Father does not want you to, because the Father is not drawing you. And this is all throughout this, the second half of John 6. And the, and the disciples, they ask him, Why, what is going on? Why are you talking like this? And he, say, and he explains to them, they don't understand. They can't even accept it. The, the disciples didn't completely understand, but they trusted Jesus. They didn't turn away from him because of this difficult, uh, this difficult thing he was saying. But it just made the Pharisees mad just like incense them. But Thompson, he says, in the future, Jesus was talking about in the future, even though he said, no one can come to me. This is not the future he's talking about. This is two different things. No one can come to me now, like these Pharisees, and I will raise them up on the last day, those who come to me. That's the future. But he equates the two things. Notice also that while he's talking about coming to Jesus and saying that this is the same thing as the last day, going to heaven, which is complete nonsense. 
notice he highlights the words and he leads his audience without giving any context, without talking about anything that was happening in the passage. Nothing about the Pharisees, nothing about the discussion, nothing about bread of life, nothing about how difficult it was for them to understand. Of course, they wouldn't believe. They couldn't believe. And how that leads to the final conclusion of what he said, the Spirit gives life. And he didn't give life to them because they weren't being drawn by God. But this is this is what you do when you want to mislead people. You show them one thing and you lead them to a conclusion without talking about the entire context of everything that's going on. Again, because he's trying to get around what the verse means. And he says that the verse is talking about going to heaven. Even though there are two separate things mentioned in the verse. And then he says, he talks about drawing all men. And he brings up John 12, 32. Where Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. And all in scripture, even all men, does not mean every single person everywhere. Even in John, there's different places where all means just the people who were seeking after Jesus and following him at the time. And sometimes it, it means just the people who are saved, that all might believe. We know all are not going to believe. There are many passages in just the Gospels that tell us that not all will believe. But when it talks about all men being saved, it means Jews and Gentiles. Because the Jews, again, they had it in their minds that salvation was just for them. But when Jesus came, he changed that. And he, and he begins in talking about that in John 3. I think it might, might be sooner, but that's one of the first passages in John where he talks about all men, the world, becoming believers or uh, being redeemed. But of course, Kevin Thompson and, and all the Armenians, they do the same thing. Jesus wants all men to be saved, but he's not going to really try very hard to save everyone because uh, free will, you know. He's just going to send out a general call, maybe give everybody a little bit of grace, and whoever comes will come. Even though he wants everyone to be saved, he's not going to try very hard. Because he prefers free will over their salvation. Even though there's all, all kinds of passages where the Bible says God turned their hearts towards himself. So, again, free will is the most important thing for these guys. And who cares if everyone is saved? Who cares if God cannot accomplish what he wants to accomplish? As long as men have their free will, people are very uncritical and they don't know their Bibles and so they listen to guys like this.